Over the past year, all of us have had to spend way more time at our desk due to COVID, which means that having a productive desk setup is something that's pretty crucial to make sure that you're getting the best quality work done. So today I'm gonna to be showing you mine. Hey guys, Arch here, a second year medical student. And on this channel, we focus on learning how to learn so we can spend our time with the things and people that matter the most to us. This is my first productivity setup tour. So I'm gonna make sure to show everything that I have on my desk that I use, why it's important to me. So let's get to it. Since I was feeling pretty creative in making this video, I wanted to split it up into four categories. The first one I'm gonna look at is all the core components, the heart of my whole setup. Then we'll talk about a bit about the veins, so a lot of the dongles and things that I have to have around it. Some of the limbs of my desk and their particular function and uses. Then also, you know, the aesthetic accessories that I have just to make it look that much better. So to begin, my whole setup is powered by my MacBook Pro 16 inch. And this one hurt the bank account quite a lot when I first got it. But now I would say that if you're looking for a desktop setup, I would highly recommend the Mac mini. So what we've got here is the model from 2019. It's the 2.3 gigahertz, eight core Intel Core i9, you've got 32 gigs of RAM. And then I also have, you know, the upgraded graphics card in here, just because I wanted to do a lot more editing, Photoshop, on this computer and don't want it to slow down at all. This is all connected to my two screens. I've got a BenQ RL series screen here. And then I've also just got an old LG screen that I got from my dad. This is uh, just, you know, something that I've got some textbooks underneath as well, as well for my Mac, uh, just because I, I want them to be elevated a little bit. Plus it also helps with the airflow of this Mac because I mean, the fans go crazy on it all of the time as well. All of this just sits on a random desk that I got from Harvey Norman many, many years ago. Um, I have used it, I, I like it, but I mean, I'm very interested in getting one of those like uh, reversible standing desks and, and also for sitting but also something that even has even more desk space because I, I always love that. Inside this desk, I actually have my uh, old gaming PC. I love the external look of it, but the internals are pretty poor. Uh, they haven't been updated in a very long time, so I might go about upgrading that pretty soon. And the funny thing is, is that my Mac actually has like way better specs than my gaming PC now. So most of the things I run on Steam are actually on my Mac. I've also got like a lot of drawers just on the side here, uh, but there's just like a lot of mess and little things that I, I need time to time, but I should really give that a clean, um, especially now that it's in spring. I also have a PS4 just for some of those games that come out on console before PC. I would always have to say that I'm a PC gamer at heart, um, but when like Red Dead, for example, came out on PS4, I got it there first. Uh, with the PS3, I got GTA 5 on there first. But those are just some of the games I play on there. I spend a lot of my time now playing Squad, which is just a PC game. I absolutely love that. I also have here my old uh, MacBook, which used to be the old heart of this whole setup. Um, it's just an absolute beast. Uh, it's now like the battery has just gone down on it. But besides that, it is still just like a machine. Um, and I, I would still use this for a lot of things as well. But basically I still have it around because there's a lot of stuff in here that um, you just simply can't back up. Like it's logged into some few things. Um, and I mean, if I go ahead and reset this then I won't have access to some of the files that I had in school anymore. Plus it has an SD card and I still haven't bought a dongle. Um, so I just use this for uploading videos. So essentially you can just think about it as a big hard drive and it always sits on this side of my desk. Next thing that I have are my iPads. So I've just got like my original 2018 iPad Pro. This is connected up to the Magic Keyboard um, with the new Apple Pencil as well. Uh, this is the main thing that I'm using all the time, but I'm also just playing around with the new iPad Air um, and just reviewing this at the time. Uh, but it also has the old keyboard that I actually use more often than the Magic one. Um, but yeah, the, these are, I use like on a daily basis, uh, mostly around studying and teaching, uh, but that's really about it. I forgot to mention that this is my new chair. This is the Herman Miller sale. I mean, it's basically overpriced, um, but it's a chair that I thought that I really needed, especially after, you know, using a really cheap chair throughout all of high school. And I'm pretty embarrassed to actually show a picture of it just because of how wrecked it was. Um, there were so many hours of studying that went into that. I'm hoping not as much go into this chair, but this is like super comfortable, super like ergonomic. And I just feel that like my back isn't getting so bad anymore um, using this. So I, I actually love it for what it is. So how I kind of justify the price for myself for something like this is like, you know, for shoes, for your mattress, for your chair, these things where you spend a lot of time, um, you know, using them, 
you kind of don't want to skimp out on that. So, you know, health is always like the number one thing. Without that, nothing else matters. So yeah, the chair, I, I justified it by, you know, I sit a lot on it. So that that's the reason. One of the things that is like extremely essential to this whole desk as well is having my Google Home Mini. I use it like so much. I use it in the morning, I use it at night. Um, and anytime I'm controlling my, my lights themselves, um, changing colors, changing brightness, making sure that I feel sleepy at nighttime as well. And I'd highly recommend anything like that. I mean, Siri is all right, but I think Google is just a little bit quicker um, and, and it works more reliably for me. But yeah, as well, the collar looks really nice across with all of the other things set up here. So if we take a look at the next section, the veins and the vessels of this whole setup, there's quite a few cables that are involved in order to make sure that data is going around and everything is all okay. I don't really want to go into the app so much. I'm going to have a whole video around that. But the main one that I'm always using for productivity on these three screens has to be this thing called Magnet, which just allows you to move um, windows very quickly, reorganize them, and just makes life pretty easy as well. So that in itself boosts my productivity a lot. And I guess the next thing that I have is just this USB-C dongle, which I mean, everyone has if you have a Mac nowadays. Um, and that just allows me to plug a little bit more into it, including the audio interface that I'm using right now. So the USB-C dongle that I have is the USB Type-C Gigabyte Network Adapter with three port USB 3.0 hub. Basically, it just has these three ports and also one for Ethernet, which I had to use when I was doing some live streaming. Um, I was actually gifted this from the med school as well, which is pretty funny. So, you know, that's something I just keep now. And using some other dongles, I have like some USB-C to HDMI adapters that connect up to these two big screens as well. And one of the reasons that stopped me from getting the M1 is because I know that that actually wasn't even possible to put it to two new screens. I, I'm hoping that in the new Macs that's going to be solved and maybe I want, might get one of those. So I have this pretty good screen, which is my Ben NQ RL2755 and yeah it's literally connected to eBay dongles. So I've got this beast of a audio interface which is the Focusrite 2i2, the original edition and I mean this is just like fantastic. I've never had issues with it. It was a little bit on the expensive side but just because I haven't had issues with it I guess it's really worth it. And then I have some extra stuff like adapters for um, this particular microphone that I'm using right now and this is connected up to a stand which we'll talk about in a sec. But this just means I'm always able to get that better audio quality before I used to have a regular a crack and headset and I mean the microphone and that wasn't that great. Moving on to the limbs of the setups, let's take a look at some of the use cases. So for my mouse, I have a Razer Death Adder. Um, this is just the original edition. So it's from 2013 actually, I can see that there. Um, but that's pretty old. I mean, it, there's just been really no problems with it. It's breaking down a little bit now, but I can fix that up pretty soon. For the keyboard, I actually spent a, quite a bit of money back on it in the day. Um, when you know I was just doing some you know coding and stuff when I was much younger to pay for something like this um, But I bought the Razer Black Widow Chroma V1 and that was all RGB That was really really cool back in the day But what ended up happening is just like one month outside of warranty it broke um, So I had contacted Razer and just argued like you know come on like can I just get this warranty checked um, and then they ended up sending me the new one, which is the Razer Black Widow Chroma V2, which is the one that I'm using now. Been using this for many, many, many years. So it is a mechanical keyboard, which means it's very loud. Um, you can usually hear it when I'm in Zoom or something like that. But I actually have linear switches on this. I actually prefer this compared to like tactile ones. Um, I'm not actually sure about like specifically what switch. I think it's like a green switch. But I kind of value the keyboard quite a lot because uh, that's how I move around on a computer with a lot of keyboard shortcuts. These micro efficiencies so that I'm able to just get, uh, you know, save a lot of time uh, while using the computer. So I always aim to use this setup where I can as opposed to just being on a laptop. Okay, so the uh, microphone that I have here, right? This is the Rode Video Mic Pro. Um, you can probably hear me moving it around, but we've got like some GoPro thing just connected here when I do some um, uh, mounts from above with the camera. But this actual um, mic stand itself is the K and M KM 210 slash two B black microphone stand. Um, and this is actually connected up with just a simple, um, you know, eighth inch uh, cord, which goes into a Rode VXLR plus 
into the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 original. And this is what I also use for recording music and things like that. This is pretty useful as well, just for those Zoom calls. Um, when I don't want to have a microphone in view, but also want to have better quality than that on my uh, my Mac, which just picks up all of the fan sounds. I also have the Canon EOS M50 recording this right now. And this is just on an XCD three-way swivel large tripod as well. This is just a beast of a camera. I know that Sebastian Piri also uses it and a lot of other you know creators out there. It's just a super easy beginner camera. It was pretty cheap as well. And I could get started with my YouTube and everything like that. So. I mean, it's recorded everything on this channel so far, so I love it. So to make my desk a little bit more appealing, um, let's talk a little bit about the makeup, the spice that I've added to this desk to make it look a little bit better. Like any other productivity YouTuber out there, I also have the classic IKEA plant. Um, I have, you know, a few that I switch between. I have one that looks like a face with some like Harry Potter glasses on it as well, but I don't know what to name my Ikea plant. So make sure to comment something down below. But yeah, the, apparently the greenery um, helps with mood and makes you a little bit more productive. So I like to keep this around time to time. So lighting is extremely important because it basically just sets a tone for all of the stuff that you have set up anyway. So what do I have? I've actually got just two big softbox lights uh, that were originally from eBay and I borrowed them from high school and then I was just able to keep them. Um, but those are just, yeah, super cheap and they do the job. The very interesting thing is I just like found some random lamp that actually goes in this corner and I put like an Australian flag around it. So it makes the light more blue, have that like a blue tinge. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff is actually pretty impromptu. With having all these lights in my room set up all the time, that actually reduces a lot of the friction and resistance for me to get started on, you know, recording a YouTube video or just taking like an Instagram picture of these sorts of things. Even though it's like literally like taking up a lot of space in my room, it's just something that's important to me. Other than that, I just have, you know, my speakers, these Yui booms that I use time to time as well. Um, I just leave them here because they're easy access. And then I also um, <coughs> just rely a lot on my headphones and these AirPods. These are amazing um, when I need to listen to music, which is basically all of the time when I'm sitting at this desk. So there's a lot of stuff I actually want to add to this setup, but I don't think it's really the, the best use of my money. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to add to these little bit by little bit. Maybe next year it's going to be a lot more different. Hopefully you've got some inspiration from this setup and to be a little bit more productive. But yeah, make sure to check out my other videos if you want to upgrade your study game and follow my Instagram. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.